Hey guys, so it's me. I thought I'd do just a quick video out here uh, in the field. It just came out by the harbor in uh, Old Town Alexander, as you can see with my uh, uh, Leica M3. I put the meter on there today. Um, but yeah, I just got this back. I had uh, a new skin put on there, a new leatherette. Went to my buddy uh, Yuxin Yi, who does just phenomenal work. Uh, I've got it covered up because I like the baby these cameras. I put the half case on there, but um, that notwithstanding, I did uh, I did do the uh, I did just receive it back with the viewfinder upgraded, and it is phenomenal. I wish I could really capture on video just how good this is. And the viewfinder upgrade I'm talking about is a um, is a Leica MP viewfinder. Okay, so it's a it's a significant upgrade. You get coated glass. Um, or multi-coated glass that, that just looks a whole lot better, uh, clearer, less flare, and makes it a lot, whole lot easier to focus and really just a joy to, to use this camera like that. The high magnification viewfinder just makes it so much easier to, to uh, compose and to shoot, especially with a 50. Just finished a roll of uh, uh, Ektachrome 100, the new Ektachrome, uh, with uh, M6, and I've got I've got, I think, Ektar in the M3. And anyway, the uh, viewfinder is so much nicer. I'm really surprised. Uh, the reskinning and the viewfinder upgrade was 180 bucks. I wanna say 120 of that is just for the viewfinder part of it. Um, it's well worth it, guys. If you think the M3 has a nice viewfinder now, take a look after Yuxin, uh, Mr. Yuxin Yi, and I'll leave his, uh, his website. Uh, his web address and email address in the description or somewhere. Yeah, just uh, wait till he does that MP uh, finder upgrade on there. So take a look at uh, the surroundings here. I'm out here by the harbor. It's just beautiful. In Old Town Alexandria, I said it's just really, it's actually a chilly day. It's a nice fall day, but hey, uh, the sun is out and I've uh, been having the itch to co go out with uh, these cameras, especially after having the upgrades done. And, uh, you know, I've really been wanting to, to test them out. So I'm going to line them up here. This is the lineup for today. As you can see, these are, these are my guys that I'm out with today. The M6, the M3, and the Raleigh Flex. Just thought I'd take them out. And I've really been... Uh, I haven't used this 90 mil uh, Tele Almarit uh, M. Tele Almarit M, I think is the nomenclature. Haven't used it for a while. This is a, a true, true Leica lens. It has that special, uh, that special sauce. It's a great portrait lens, 90 millimeter, 2.8, and it just gives you these beautiful pictures. It's just really hard to explain um, just how nice that this lens renders and it's relatively cheap it's uh it's not the most expensive like a lens you can get one anywhere from four to six hundred bucks which if you know anything about like a lens is that dirt dirt cheap but it's a really nice lens uh and of course the the 50 summicron is made to be mounted on the on the m3 uh, more than anything uh, it's super super sharp this is the dual range left the goggles at home um, just I'm just out with these cameras. I'm just shooting fast and random and I'm not thinking too much I'm just kind of using the force and uh, see if I come back with something nice I'm not overthinking it. Just kind of having a good time out here. I love this camera. This one actually had a uh, viewfinder update It's a I'm sorry focusing screen up that I had done to the to the flex And I've got a roll of Portra 160 And I'm gonna take some photos out here at the harbor um, just to see uh, how uh, how it is to use that that new focusing screen because um, the Rolly Flex is as fine as they are uh, in terms of optics and build quality. The focusing screens are not that bright. Uh, everything else about them is, is pretty much perfect though. They're a fun camera to use. Uh, I forgot one little step in loading the film so I blew through two rolls of film uh, when I started winding them winding the film in there it just kept going and it really pissed me off because uh 
I, I can put it in a dark bag and, and I guess put them back where they were, but it, it was just a rudimentary step. I knew it, but I just forgot it because I haven't used it in almost a year. I, you know, it's been using all these other cameras um, and the Rolleiflex is a little slow in use, but in terms of optics and, and sharpness, I mean, it's second to none. I mean, this is a really, really sharp uh, uh, lens on this camera. And this is a Zeiss, no surprise there. Zeiss 75 millimeter, two point. Oh, I'm sorry, 3.5. I wish it was a 2.8. This is a Zeiss. I believe it's a, a Tessar. Yeah, a Zeiss Tessar. And so I'm, I'm happy to report that I uh, I do like the that uh, high brightness uh, screen on the on the Raleigh Flex. It really does make a difference. Uh, I think I'm getting some nice shots with the Raleigh. Uh, it's it's like night and day in terms of your composition. I mean, with this, uh, with this, this is an MX EVS, EVS, a fun camera to use. It definitely makes you slow down a little bit. It, uh, you can shoot at waist level or you can shoot it, um, actually, you can actually shoot at eye level. Um, I'll show you that. It has a, uh, it has a configuration there. For the viewfinder you see it, it's I mean you can look through here um, for focusing and you can look through here for framing so in a in a sense it's kind of like you know you can hold it up to your eye and just look through this huge uh, hole there but in terms of focusing you you look through that little lens and, and it allows you to focus with this split prism or whatever kind of screen you've got on there um, but yeah that's that's you know kind of an alternate way of using it uh, most people won't do that they just kind of look either look down like this uh, with this top magnifier that pops out or they'll hold it down waist level and uh and focus that way uh, and today was really the first day that i got outdoors with the with the bright screen and it was really really an enjoyable experience um when i i generally you know pop out the magnifier and compose like this and and when I when I do that, it just it made such a big difference that that screen was nice and bright, um, and it, it really I I think just helps with the uh, with your composition, or it takes an obstacle away. I think is what it really was more than anything, because I found myself really enjoying composing with this camera now, uh, and taking photos with this camera. I like the square format. It's just different than than everything else, like six by nine, six by seven, six four five. You know, even your your digital cameras, uh, they all have that rectangular format in one variation or the other. So it's kind of cool to have uh, a nice square format. Well, I was surprised because when I picked this up, uh, I, you know, I thought this was going to be the old slow poke, and and could you know, nothing could have been further from the truth. This one, I, I started cranking out pictures. You get, I think, it was 15 exposures per a 120 roll. And it went by like that, man. I mean, I, I really started enjoying it. And it really has everything to do with the focusing screen. Because I, I like this camera a lot, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I did today, ever. And the, the reason for that is the focus screen. You guys, I'm sure, know of or have heard of the Yashica Mat 124G. I'll just mention that real quick. It's, um, I don't I honestly know which came first. I'm guessing the Raleigh Flexes were around first. And the Yashica pretty much copied them. Um, and I had a, a couple of 124Gs, um, you know, I've, I've owned them before and they're, I know they're very popular cameras and I know they take great photos. They've got decent optics. The, the optics on this camera are much, much better than the Yashica Mat, believe that or not. Um, and the build quality, uh, versus the, the Yashica Mat, and I'm not, you know, downing the, the, the Yashica, it costs you know like one fifth what this camera cost uh so you know so you get a lot for your money and i i did enjoy it uh i did enjoy using the uh, yashica but this camera when you pick a raleigh flex up i mean the build quality is so much better than the yashica it's not even on the you know and i i didn't it's that's not always the case when you pay more for something you don't necessarily get something that's so much greater but uh, yeah, that's the case with a Raleigh Flex versus a Yashica. Again, uh, for the money, nothing wrong with Yashica. You can get one for 100, 150 bucks. It's got great glass and it gets the job done, but it kind of feels and sounds like a tin can. 
it does. It sounds like a hollow tin can, like when you're winding the film and when you're, you know, you're doing different things and, um, you know, taking the picture, or whatever. It just sounds like a big hollow, empty uh, tin tin can, where this feels like a, you know, like what it is. It's a German-made uh, precision uh, instrument. So that's that's really the the big difference between the two. Um, they're both great for what they are. They're both two different categories of camera. Uh, and they both get the job done. Um, can't emphasize enough to how nice the optics are. And bonus for that big negative, because you can get tons of detail out of it, you know, versus like a super sharp um, uh, Leica lens, but you're kind of stuck with that small 35 mil negative. This one is literally four times the size of a Leica negative, and you still have the really nice sharp optics. So that's uh, that's a double bonus. So there you have it guys, I really enjoyed taking these cameras out, especially the Roliflex which I haven't used for quite a while. Um, it was a fun day, I liked using the different films and you'll see uh, in these photos coming up uh, the results of uh, the different films, the Ektachrome, the Kodak uh, Pro Image and the Kodak Portra. So enjoy and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, bye.